Okay, hello everybody. Can you see and hear me, please? We're using some new software here. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, but it's all good. That's why we're here. Um, can you see and hear me? Paul's here from sunny Hereford Herefordshire. Yeah, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Okay. So, right. What, I'm trying to add Adam to the call. Um, but so far it's not, it's not working. Let me just see. Sorry about this guys. I knew this first one was going to be a bit of a, a bit of a mess. Let me just see if I can add Adam to the call. Uh, we'll hopefully figure this out better for next time. Bear with me, please, everybody. I'm sorry about this, but just give me a minute to try and get this set up and then we can begin. Yeah, where's everybody from? Come on, post in the chat. Where are you all dialing in from today? I can see who we got here. Steve's here from Northampton. Hey, Steve. Starting from square minus one. <laughs> Not square one, square minus one. Uh, Bruce is here from Brooklyn. Bruce, great to see you again, mate. Cranky Frankie. Thanks, Mike, for doing this. Absolutely my pleasure. I'm looking forward to it. It's always fun doing live stuff. Janet's here from Florida. Hey, Janet, great to see you again. Darius is here from Norwich. I love Norwich. My dad used to live in Norwich. I used to go there a lot when I was a kid. Cool city. Stephen's here from Manchester. Paul from sunny Herefordshire. Yeah, the sun's shining in the UK today. I've got a bit of a bronzy going on already. Look, look at this. I'm an albino, so this is like, this is a major tan for me. Um, Chris is here. <laughs> hey, Chris, Steve. Okay, everybody, yeah. Great, okay, we've got people from all over the place. India, Kent. Everybody can hear me and see me. Rick's here from the Philippines. Awesome. Okay. So listen, everybody, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I can't figure out how to add Adam to the call. Obviously, there's some setting that we need to, uh, that we need to tweak in future. Oh, hey, here he is. <laughs> He's upside down. <laughs> this is going to be fun. All right, Adam, I'm going to add you in three, two, one. All right. Hey, Adam. Hey, can you hey, hear I me? Can hear, I can hear you. This is amazing. We've, made, cool. we've, con we've conquered the internet. I've got I'm, uh, I'm on my I'm on my phone now because uh, because yeah <laughs> yeah so but like before the call uh, we're using some software called Streamyard which basically is, gives you all these extra features for live streaming one of which being allowing other people to dial in um, but because I'm a complete idiot when it comes to computers we just could not get it working uh, let's see if this works oh look at that Adam beautiful oh I love it this is great okay cool let me get a little angle going here you'll have to pardon a little bit of the reflection here i uh it's i good, dropped mate. my phone down the staircase the other day and uh cracked the screen on it so mate it's all good i'm just pleased that you're here i thought it was going to be flying solo no um, no no you're good yeah absolutely so, hi everybody just, hey everybody so so listen just for people who don't know like you know our students and members adam is a familiar face um, but for those of you that don't know adam has been a member of the nga team for many years he's in lots of ways my right hand man and knows way way more about the guitar than i ever would it's like great to have him around to lean on adam is a brilliant musician composer producer and just an all-around musical guru um adam so I, i've kind of butchered your intro there mate why don't you just introduce yourself like rather than me saying like what you do why don't you say what you do <laughs> yeah yeah no problem at all it was a wonderful intro by the way thank you for that mike um, hi, everybody. My name is Adam Tobias. I'm a composer, songwriter, guitarist, and music producer, or as I refer to it, a professional noisemaker. And uh, music is what I do. I've been working with National Guitar Academy for just over five years, making content, making lessons, helping teach people, helping people tap their innermost abilities on the guitar. And uh, I'm really excited for this next chapter with National Guitar Academy. The Music Makers live stream. Is that what we're going with? Yeah, I think that's going to be the name. Yeah, I love I it. I like it. Yeah, um, mate, thank you for the thank you for the intro. Like, you're getting good at that. Like, yeah, you're getting good at that. Like, elevator pitch. You're in there. Cool. Thanks, um, man. Yeah, I spend a lot of time in elevators, <laughs> pitching. <laughs> yeah, just just cruising the stairwells and elevators of like Toronto or wherever you are now. You're not you never Toronto, know who's going to need to cut an album. Where? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got to be able to communicate the value straight away. Yeah, that's um, it. So listen, everybody, this is episode one of 
um, the, the Music Makers live stream. Um, this is not going to just be guitar tuition. Until now, like everything that National Guitar Academy has done has obviously been, you know, teaching guitar, guitar tuition. Uh, but the Music Makers live stream is not going to just be that. It's going to be broader than that. So there will be some elements of guitar tuition. I think, Adam, I think I'm right in saying you and I are both primarily sort of, I guess, guitar is our main instrument. Yeah. Even though, even though we both play other things, guitar is kind of our main thing. So, so yeah, hundred percent. So these these live streams are definitely going to be more guitar centric, I guess, than most other instruments. But we don't want to be restricted by that. We want this to be a place where we can speak about music in general, guitar culture, music culture, music production, and so on. Um, totally. Just so everybody knows who's on the call, um, like obviously today is kind of a sort of a test, you know, like we'll we'll see where this goes. Um, but my sort of broader aim for this and like what Adam and I have discussed and where I'd like to take this is, you know, the purpose of this live stream is we want to teach, we want to inspire, we want to entertain. That's the purpose of this live stream. Eventually, I'd like us to get to the point where we're interviewing people here on the live stream as well. So, you know, Adam and I will co-host it, but I'd like to get other faces on here, interview other people, musicians, guitarists, producers, music makers, you know, from from every sort of corner of the world and different genres and everything and also um just the ideas that i had for this was that we'd have like different segments so rather than it being like a one hour long chat i thought it'd probably be more fun maybe just for my adhd brain to break it up and have like several different topics that we can discuss so i was thinking you know we can have some guitar tips we can speak about you know chords and scales and sort of lead based tips and things like that but that we could also have you know a place to spotlight new artists or certain albums um spotlight up and coming artists speak about you know gear different guitar gadgets that may we might be interested in music culture in general um but for today we're just gonna sort of throw some stuff out there see what you guys like um please give us your feedback you know tell us what what you enjoy um tell us what you want more of and what you want less of and yeah i thought that could kind of be the vibe of where we go so i hope that sounds fun everybody um and yeah that's kind of the aim adam how are you feeling about this this is a brand new thing like you know we're hoping that this is going to music makers live stream is going to like run and run and run but like as we start on this adam what do you think mate are you looking forward to it like you know where absolutely do you, where, do you, where do you think it'll go like what would you like to do i think it's an awesome idea man and i think we just need more community out there that's positive for guitarists and musicians you know and i think because one of the things too is i mean national guitar academy has always been about guitar but it's also been a bit of a culture mover in its own way for its students and i think it's going to be really cool to kind of branch that out a bit more generally on youtube and really open that up to other people and for everybody who's watching right now don't forget i mean Everything that we do at this company, we do for our students. So if there's something more that you want touched on on this live stream in particular, if there's something that you find really pertinent and interesting, let us know in the comments section or drop us an email or message us on Facebook or on Instagram and let us know that A, you're into it and B, this is what you want to see more of. And we'll start trying to accommodate these topics week after week after week. And so therefore, it's just going to end up being the case that we're providing increasing value to everybody who's watching these right we want to create a community of people yeah. where everyone can feel comfortable having qualms questions and concerns all addressed on the music yeah. makers live stream right we so yeah them. let's let it build itself out i think it's going to be an awesome thing for the community and it's going to be an awesome thing for everybody here including yeah. us we, we want that interaction, don't we, Adam? I think we both want that, you know, we don't want to just be broadcasting. It needs yeah. to be like, you know, let's get everybody together. Let's talk about this. Let's figure this stuff out. Let's have a discussion. Um, totally. Great idea there from Gary. Would be cool if you guys did guitarist profile where you discussed a certain guitarist style and what scales they use and how they use them. That'd be great. Yeah, great yeah. idea, Gary. You know, like a sort of a deep dive on a specific guitarist. Like, this is why they sound so cool. You know, Dave Gilmore's solos in Pink Floyd, they sound cool because he used these effects. Yeah, you know, 100%. He used his bends in this particular way. Great idea. Um, please keep those ideas coming, everybody. Um, we, we certainly want that. Also, just before we begin, we've got a few things that we wanted to run through today on this, on this, um, this first session. But just before we do begin on that, um, if anybody's got any specific guitar questions or music questions in general, please post them in the chat and we can reply to them as we go through. So if you've got any anything you're struggling with on the guitar right now, put it in the chat. 
What are you struggling with? What's frustrating you at the moment? What do you wish you understood that you don't understand currently? Put it in the chat and Adam and I will do our best to help you. We'll be doing Q&A. I think we'll probably just do it throughout the live stream rather than yeah, I think so. to the end. Um, so yeah, yeah, please put it in the chat. Let us know what you think. Um, and all right, cool. So listen, I'm going to begin. There's a couple of things I wanted us to kick off with today. So Adam, uh, we're going to speak later on about the sort of, what's the word? The news, the sort of the current status quo, the, co the current state of the nation for you know, creating music and music creators. We're going to come on to that shortly. But I thought yeah. before we do, we could just begin with a couple of different um, a couple of different things I thought would be fun to hit on. One, just to give people a soft landing in, into this, I thought we could give them a quick guitar tip that will help them. So let me see if I can modify the screen here so you guys can see this. All right, we're going to go on to me only. I hope this is all working. It looks kind of yeah. cool for me. I've got all the, I've got, I'm like, I've got this back cave of like dials and things that I can press. Um, so listen, what I wanted to show you was just super quick, very kind of beginner level um, tip, which is how to uh, broaden out your pentatonic scale. So if you're a beginner guitarist and you probably start off playing uh, and you want to get started playing lead guitar, then everybody begins with the pentatonic scale. I'm going to play it here in A minor. Okay, and I'm going to play. Okay, that's the pentatonic scale that many of you will already know and love. If I go in a bit tighter there, hopefully you can see that. Yeah, so that's a pattern, a scale that, you know, all guitarists begin with. You have one finger per fret and we play. Okay, now I just want to show you super quick there, a really cool way that you can extend that out is by using what we call diagonals. So that's where you pinch a little bit of the scale pattern below and a little bit of the scale pattern above and it gives you way, way more range. So let me show you that. So instead of playing here, trying to do that with one finger to make it super clear, you can actually pinch a little bit of the box that's below, which is here. So can you see how we've just moved a few frets lower? So we've gone from always coming back to the fifth fret because we're playing A minor here. If we, if we were playing it here, we'd be doing B minor, C minor, D minor. It's a movable shape. But right now we're starting it on the fifth fret. And instead of only going from the fifth fret and above, I'm dropping down a bit lower to here. So that means we've got some extra notes. Now it's only a couple of notes. But they really, really make a difference because we've got a lower range. Similarly, if we do that a bit higher, yeah, just in our normal pentatonic box here, but we can go up higher and we can play this box here. One, two, three, four. So what we're doing here is So that to me is like one of those things where it's kind of like, wow, you look like a guitarist, you're zooming all over the neck. All you've done is add two extra notes on the low end and two extra notes on the high end. And what that gives you is more range as a musician. So if you're feeling kind of trapped in that pentatonic box, which almost everybody does at some point when they get started with lead guitar, then just branching out and adding that lower extension and that higher extension, just two notes on either end, gives you way, way more range as a guitarist. It also gives you access to that, that lower end here, so you can do some cool bends. Yeah. to drop down into that lower area i always think that's super fun it's like really really easy way to just add a few extra notes into that pentatonic scale um, that you already that you probably already know certainly if you're an intermediate guitarist you probably already know that um, so yeah that was just a quick guitar tip that i wanted to share with you to kick things off um, and let's have a look let's have a look at the comments here before we move on to the next stuff the next bits and pieces that i wanted us to discuss today 
Okay, we've got some weird stuff about COVID vaccines. I guess you're going to get that on YouTube. Guys, please don't give us any of that wild stuff. We're not interested. Um, although I guess there's going to be spam stuff on here, isn't it? That's how it goes. Yeah, most likely. Um, okay, so Gary says... <laughs> yeah, so Gary says, it's funny. My biggest issue at the moment is trying to relax and not forgetting to breathe, which I didn't see coming. <laughs> So yeah, we were speaking about this, Adam, weren't we, on the members uh, on the members live stream last week about the importance of not carrying tension when you play. I was it's so how, important. Yeah, like I get so tense when I play. I feel my jaw tightening. It's like could I, I do the, I do my best just... work recording when I've when I've had a chance to just breathe through everything a little bit, stretch out, and kind of let myself relax back into the music. I think one of the worst things that we could do for ourselves as, as musicians of any type, doesn't even just have to be guitar players, is not stretch and not practice a little bit of deep breathing before and also during uh, a practice session, right? Because that's your, your, your train of thought, your focus is so rooted in your breath that as soon as you get into that kind of like shallow breathing type thing, you're going to lose focus. You're going to fall off track so much faster. So yeah, don't forget to breathe, man. It's very important. Yeah. It's, it's one of those weird things that you don't, that you kind of take for granted, but then if somebody yeah. actually points it out, you can actually see the difference it makes. Um, okay. We've got this interesting message here from cranky Frankie. Love that username. Very mm -hmm. cool. Uh, please talk about the difference between playing sitting and standing up. I find it to be much harder capitals to play standing up because I can't see the fretboard. It is, it, it, they are two very different things, aren't they? And they, they kind yeah. of shouldn't be, but they but they really are. So uh, yeah, m my advice about that would be the most important thing of all, I think, is that you adjust the strap of your guitar to try and get the guitar to be the same height it is when you sat down. So when you are playing sitting down, if you primarily play sitting down, and most people I think do, certainly from the students we've taught, most of them primarily play sitting down. The guitar is at a certain height on your body. So wherever you play, maybe you've got a particular chair or stool or sofa, that whatever it is where you sit, the guitar comes to a certain height on your body and you're comfortable with it at that height. But what a lot of people do is when they stand up, they have a strap and the guitar is either higher or lower than they're used to it being. So a lot of people, they come unstuck this way because if they rehearse something at home, and then they stand up and they perform at their church or at their school or at an open mic night or whatever. It's like, oh, this doesn't feel weird. Everything's changed. This isn't what I'm used to. And that's super common. But if you can, in, in my experience, most people have the guitar slung too low when they play. So what happens is that when they, when they, when they, when they play at home, the guitar is here. And they can see the strings very clearly. Everything's good because they're used to it. It's comfortable. They're relaxed. They're used to this setup. But then when they put the strap on the guitar and they stand up, the guitar comes down here somewhere. And now everything's further away. Your wrist position's all messed up. And most importantly of all, you can't see where you're playing. So I think it's super important to make sure that you get the height consistent, whether you're stood up or not. Usually that means bringing the guitar up a lot higher. Make sure that you put some strap locks on the guitar so the guitar yes. doesn't fall off when you play in, which is another very common mistake that people make. Strap locks are like little metal lugs that go on the um, attachment points on the guitar and they'll stop the guitar from falling off while you're on stage and you're looking like a complete idiot. Yeah, no, nobody wants that. And bear in mind too um, that practicing standing up is a real thing, right? Yes. And I know it, it, sound, it sounds so goofy because like whenever I tell someone to practice standing up, it reminds me of my old like, days when I was first learning how to play guitar and I was playing in like power chord punk bands and like I would practice AKA the best bands of uh, the best bands, all the best <laughs> bands, but I would practice standing up and adjusting my strap until I kind of found the spot. Cause I was also like, it's funny too, because at the same time that I was playing in bands like that, I was listening to all like the technical, like progressive metal stuff. Well, these guys were all playing up here. Yes. Right. And that wasn't, that wasn't practical for me. So, yeah. but I mean, when you're practicing standing up, you want to make sure that you are doing a couple of things, especially if you're, if you're new to practicing standing up. Number one, rotate the guitar, 
a little bit up towards you a little bit, right? Especially if you've got a lighter instrument, you got a little bit more control over it. This one in particular, I love because it's so light. I can just throw it out the window. Um, but uh, yeah, like you want to be able to just turn that over in your hand, get that same yeah. amount of control yeah, and feel well that you would have if you were practicing sitting down. Because again, too, it's a it's a body dynamic. Is it? And it sounds strange to say it, but it really is. Like how you're going to approach the guitar when you're sitting here in a nice, you know, comfy, jazzy, classical position or whatever is going to be completely different than how you're approaching it at an open mic or on stage or anything else like that. And then even then, too, if, I'm not sure if you're a live performer who asked the question, but if you are and you're prepping for a gig, always practice in the way that you're going to be performing. So if you're going to be performing standing up, practice your set standing up. And if you're going to be performing sitting down, practice your set sitting down. It's a completely different dynamic, but yeah, definitely the biggest thing with that, I would say, is just practice. You know, your, your, your significant other might find you looking a little bit goofy in the living room every once in a while, but you know what? Dance like no one's watching. <laughs> Do you know what, Adam? I think the main thing there is like just you have to, yeah, you have to play that way, don't you? If you want to get better at playing stood up, you have to practice stood up. Yeah, like, 100%. You've just got to do it to get comfortable with it. And as long as the guitar is at a consistent height, then it then you can do it, you know. But like if, if it's if it if the guitar's different, I mean, I used to teach a, a kid who wanted to play like uh, what's the guy's name, Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day, where the guitar oh, slung really low, and it's like it might look cool visually, like on the stage when the guitar's that low, but like, dude, that is not. Congested. That's lower back pain waiting to happen <laughs> in twenty years. No, man, no. I yeah. and you know it's so funny too because like Billy Joe really was the guy that put everybody forth on it. I did it I did it too when I was in like my American idiot phase back in high school, which is wild to think that American idiot came out when I was in high school. Um, yeah. I'm 35 this year for anyone who's wondering. But um, yeah, and I mean, he was he was the guy and a lot of my students too, it was the same thing. Like, oh, I want to play all the way down here. And I was like, okay, cool, why? Oh, because Billy Joe from, uh, Billy Joe from Green Day. It looks cool. It looks cool. I'm like, it looks cool. Yeah, but that guy walks like he's hunched over. I mean, you know, it's it's just one of those things that you kind of you you do have to be careful with it. I mean, if you if you kind of like you know lean to the one side, I'm sure you could pull it off a little bit more without completely tearing your lower back to shreds. But yeah. as the man in, as the man in his 30s, I look at that now and go, huh? <laughs> back pain. Back pain. Yeah, that's it. Um, listen, we got it. It's happened already. Krishanu has asked, please explain the circle of fifths. Oh no. Oh no, this is bad news. This this is like this is the worst possible outcome. I didn't I didn't expect this so soon on the live stream. <laughs> do we do we want to uh you know what? I'll tell you what we can do and uh Krishan, I'll I'll speak to this directly for you. Here's what we're gonna do. Today we just kind of wanted to do a little bit of a general thing on the live stream just to kind of test the waters, but this is a question that deserves its own topic. So yeah. what I'm going to say is, let's put a pin in this just for today. Tune back in next week, and we'll have something prepped where we can kind of have an open conversation about the circle of fifths. Because there's a lot of implications to the circle of fifths from soloing to chord structure to songwriting. Like yeah. it, it impacts everything. So yeah. I would also like to hear you speak about that, Adam, because to me it just seems like a completely useless concept. I've never ever understood the worth of it. I know it has value as a musical way to visualize the musical world and key harm harmonies and structure and stuff like that. But to me, it's like, it just seems like a complete waste of time. Like, and it's so counterintuitive and weird to understand on the guitar. Like, I feel like I'd rather just tell people, you know, I'd rather just show them where the one, the four and the five is on the guitar and then they can just do it rather than trying to figure out this like weird, you know, yeah. concept. But I, I, yeah, I'd love to hear your take on that. But yeah, yeah I, feel totally. like, I feel like it'd be useful if we prepared a bit for that. Yeah, I'm gonna say let's uh, let us let us prepare for that one, just because I think I think we kind of more so came into this today, just kind of expecting to do a little bit of a general music discussion. But like this is well, it's definitely middle, something that has like a huge amount of impact, first and foremost, and secondly, it's something that kind of deserves its own topic, you know, because the circle of fifths, like I said, it impacts soloing, it imp impacts the way that you approach improvisation, chord structure, songwriting, everything. And it, it can be a little bit unintuitive um, 
so yeah i'm gonna say let's put it let's put a pin in that for now yeah. but christian thank you for getting right to the bones of it that's yeah, fantastic and, and also adam i think it'd be cool if we did like prepare something for that specifically and be like right yeah. okay how do we make this really weird confusing thing simple you know i yeah. think that'd be that would be really useful i think some people would really appreciate that um we've got another question here from larry um, again very very common issue larry says for me i grow in tension when with my teacher he does everything to calm things down but as i tense everything i did in the week falls apart larry i saw this hundreds of times when i was you know back in the day when i was doing one-to-one -one guitar lessons for like eight hours a day this was this would happen with every student uh that they practice something all week and they'd be able to do it and then when they were with uh when i'd arrive they'd like they'd mess up or you know they'd be super nervous or like some people would actually shake before they played you know and i'd be like dude you know like i'm on your side i'm here to teach you like there's nobody in the world who's rooting for you more than me there's no yeah. need to feel tense around me um but i i think larry honestly I, I don't know what the solution is to that larry other than to just push through it and just do it and mess it up because the more you mess it up the better you'll get at it so you've just got to get through the messy part um ultimately it doesn't really matter that much what happens when the teacher's there as long as you're making progress if you mess up when the teacher's there but you're still making progress that's actually the most important thing you know it's absolutely not, it's not about bit about trying to impress your teacher the main thing is that you're actually getting better on the guitar yeah and i mean to that too larry remember that you're in a judgment-free zone right now oftentimes i mean i'm, I'm just you know preaching in the choir but like you Pay for guitar lesson, right? So this yeah. person is is there, your teacher is there to be a judgment free character to guide you through your musical journey. And don't forget, man, it's messy. Okay, starting out on any instrument is messy. I've been playing the guitar since I was twelve years old, about five ish. Now well, maybe like seven. Yeah, about seven years ago in college, I started taking up the piano. And I consider myself to be a fairly proficient guitar player. Um, and piano humbled me, like, immediately. I was like, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. And it was very messy. Even in, And this is at a point in my career where I've been playing in bands for ages. I've been doing session work. I've been doing all this stuff already inside the industry. I go off to college to learn more about music and realize I know nothing about how to play the piano. And... I had to go to these group lessons every week because it was a class, it was a college, it wasn't a private lesson. And my instructor would walk around, play the piece, play the piece, play the piece, play the piece. <clears throat> and I would very much sympathize with that notion. I mean, this is in a group setting, so a little bit more high stress. But yeah, but just remember too, and this is the thing that got me through that, was that that person's still there to teach me. So, right? so I could play Claire de Lune like absolute garbage and he's still going to stand there and be like, okay, we'll try this instead. Play the F instead of the F sharp, these types of things. So don't forget, it's it's a collaborative experience between you and your teacher. And the right teacher will always elevate you, will always lift you up, and will always make you feel safe in your practice. And just try to remind yourself of that before you go into your next lesson and see if it doesn't if that doesn't help a little bit. It does get easier, but it's slow. And it will be slow, my friend. It will be slow, but that is no reason for you to hold back. Yeah, Thanks for your no, question. No, that's, that's so true, Adam. And also, the other thing I'd say is be prepared to, like, try several teachers. Yeah. A lot of people, like, try one guitar teacher, and if it doesn't work out, they sort of give up on tuition. And, like, that is so not the right, right way to do it. You know, I used to say, you know, to everybody, you know, at, at one point, the, the local guitar school that I used to own, we had um, about 13 teachers on the team. Mm, yeah. 11 12 13 teachers like at, at, at one point um and what i used to say to all of our new students was look tr you know this is they'd, they'd explain what they wanted to learn and i'd say okay try this guy i think he's going to be the best fit for you but he might not be so if yeah. that's the case like don't worry don't feel bad have it in your mind as a, as a guitar student just have it in your mind that you're going to need to try four five or six guitar teachers before you find one who really clicks with you and it's so worth that bit of a faff at the start of trying different people it's like because if you find a guitar teacher you really connect with who gets you 
understands how you learn and you feel relaxed around and also understands your musical tastes like that's worth its weight in absolute gold um, it is and yes, it so is and you know that there's there's another half to this too that i think that a lot of people don't really talk about and i'm gonna bring this up as a result of my experience um and this is not to deter anyone from finding a guitar teacher because I do believe that there is someone out there for just about everyone in terms of guitar tuition. But you may also be the type of person who has not found a teacher. You may not actually find a, te a teacher at all. And that was my case. When I was younger, I was very self-propelled when it came to learning music. And so I started out, as I said earlier, like playing punk and metal. And so I was learning riffs from like Lamb of God, Led Zeppelin, ACDC, um, Cradle of Filth, like all of these different, uh, very kind of like technical sounding bands. And I was picking this stuff up and I was, wasn't playing it well, but I was learning how to play it. And I showed up for guitar lessons at my local music store one day, thinking that this guy was going to get me over the top to the next part. And, uh, well, because I was a teenager, he sat me down with Mary Had a Little Lamb and not Mary Had a Little Lamb of God. And, uh, <laughs> And it just wasn't my vibe. And so I, you know, after two lessons, I was like, okay, cool. That's that. And, and that was the end of it. And I went and I picked up a whole bunch of books. I picked up a whole bunch of DVDs from uh, my local, mu from that same local music store that I still shop at when I'm in my mom's town, when I'm in my hometown. Um, but, and that was just kind of it. I picked up a bunch of books. I picked up a bunch of DVDs. Um, UltimateGuitar.com wasn't actually a thing back then yet. It was just kind of in its inception. Uh, but we had MXTabs.com or .net. And I picked up songs off of that and I just started learning. And eventually I got into online learning. I found places that had courses and other things like that, like National Guitar Academy, for example. Um, and, you know, you take a course here and there, you, you learn a couple things here and there, pick up a couple books that's a perfectly valid way to continue to learn music. So if you are watching this and you're in a position where you're like, oh, I haven't really found a teacher that I jive with yet. Don't worry. Keep looking. And that's fine. But also learn to be okay with maybe taking up a little bit of tuition yourself or maybe be okay with trying out a few online courses. And if you are, this would be a perfect time to mention the fact that we have online courses available on our website, nationalguitaracademy.com. Please go ahead and check them out, and uh, I can guarantee you, you will love all of the content with it. Oh, we've got courses. We've got courses. <laughs> we certainly do. Um, listen, everybody, I want others to shift gears, and I want to try something new here and see if this works. I want to spotlight a, a band. Uh, let's see if this is going to work. If I share my screen. Uh, let's see if we can do this here. Let's see this. If I share my screen and i want to share the entire screen let's see if this is going to work right i want to share this with you right so R ryoko right ryoko is a new band now i don't know if you're going to be able to hear my system audio here let's try this and see if it works adam can you hear a punky guitar playing no <laughs> ah okay so you can't hear the system audio all right so i won't i won't keep that going um, guys, I just want to spotlight this band. This is Ryoko. They are a band, um, a two-piece band, very punky. Uh, Bob the Bobfather Hayes and Captain Andy. Okay, so Captain Andy, how do I stop sharing this? Okay, let me figure out how I stop sharing that screen. There we go. Um, right, I just want to highlight that to you. Ryoko, R-Y-O-K-O, -O, on Bandcamp. If you just Google Ryoko Bandcamp super super cool like very very punky um like lo-fi distorted guitars great melodies really influenced by like 80s popular culture there's loads of samples in there from things like i don't know the lost boys and like basically any like 80s pop culture film um it's all been put into this album called raging with a machine um by andy hignett who has worked with us for many many years um and these are really cool uh, really cool and interesting guy and that's his new album please go and check it out i'm not just recommending it because he's a friend i'm recommending it because it's it's literally one of the best albums i've heard this year i love it a bit it's so good um, it's super I mean, gritty 
I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, I really wanted to play some of it here on the stream, um, but obviously we need to figure out how we how we play system audio through the stream. We'll figure that out for next week. Yeah, I think OBS might be able to solve that uh, open broadcast software, but I'm not sure how we integrate it with uh, StreamYard. Yeah, I'm sure there's a way we can do it. Let me make yeah, a sure. system audio. We need that. I want to be able to play music on these streams. Mm -hmm. um, somebody asked earlier on, will these streams be available or do we after the fact or do we have to watch it live? No, they will be available. They will be available on our YouTube channel. So obviously, if you watch them live, then obviously you can take part in the comments and ask questions and so on. Um, but they will be available afterwards. You don't have to attend live. Um, Adam, you had a cool topic for us to discuss today. Do you want to just set it up for people? Like, you know, yeah, I'll let you. I'll let you exp let you explain. Yeah, I mean, we uh, we thought it'd be kind of interesting because, you know, this this live stream in particular is branching out a little bit further away from just the guitar. And so we're not really 150% certain like what the learning level of everybody is that's gonna be watching this. But I did kind of wanna just talk a little bit about current music, like current trends that are happening. I know like in National Guitar Academy in the past, a lot of our audience have been huge classic rock heads, which is great. Um, and what I've actually tried to do with our newsletters and such is actually try to pitch music to our audience that's completely polar opposite. So a lot of the, if you are subscribed to our email list, for example, and you get any of our newsletters with our music recommendations, um, you will see a lot of the time that it's maybe progressive rock music or indie rock or like different things like that. They kind of span away from the, the tried and true time, time tested classic rock guitar tunes. Um, but I just, I love talking about the state of music today because it's such an interesting and such a cool time to be a musician. If you forget about the fact that Spotify doesn't really pay artists, but anyways, um, not to say that you can't make money streaming your music on Spotify. It's just difficult, but I do think it's a really cool time to be a musician right now. And I think more than ever, so many things are not gate kept the way that they used to be, you know, with the advent of the internet and home recording and everything like that, I find, and Mike, I don't know if you resonate with this the same way as well, but I think it'll be an interesting conversation that like a lot of modern music tends to really push the boundaries of genre in ways that we've not really seen before, you know? Yeah. I feel like right now it's like, it's a, it's a golden age for musicians in some ways and it's whatever the opposite of a golden age is in in other ways um you know because you can get your music out there and distribute it like very very easily now um you know it used to be that you needed the record company didn't you for distribution they had the connection to make you the connections to make your music widespread yeah um nowadays you don't need that um but essentially you got to do some, you got to be prepared to do like to market your backside off, haven't you? To get your music heard um, yeah. and get it out there in front of people. I think for musicians in general, they're well placed to do that because they're very creative and passionate people. Um, but I also feel like, I don't know, I, I, it, do, it doesn't feel good to me that Spotify pays so little um, and that there's this one kind of company that is kind of monopolized the mainstream you know, music space, it's, but that's never a good thing, you know? No, it's not. I mean, it's, we are definitely at a changing of the tide. I definitely think that TikTok music is going to be the newest thing. And if that's any bit indicated by Spotify selling a whole bunch of their shares recently out of nowhere, then uh, I think we're already kind of on the cusp of it. I think what TikTok is doing for musicians is better than what Spotify has been doing mostly because the advent of these types of trends and things like that, where you can get a piece of audio to trend and it actually translates to a royalty. Um, that's a really, that's a really new thing. You know, I always, the funniest, the funniest instance of this that I found with the whole TikTok music sphere was, uh, I don't remember if it happened in Toronto. I don't remember where it happened, but some rapper organized a pop-up show and I guess he had had a sound that was trending on TikTok and it was like 40 seconds long. And it was just a snippet of one of his songs and everyone was using it. So he sets up this pop-up show. He advertises the whole thing. Hundreds of people come out. He plays that 40 second snippet 
from his song, Tear Down, Tears Down and Leaves. That was it. The set was 40 seconds. Wow. And it's, it's a bit goofy, as you think about it. It's probably not, you know, kind of what we all had in mind, but it is definitely symptomatic of, like, what is happening in the industry right now. Like, it used takes, to be the case that... It takes guts to just play a 40-second gig. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, listen to a song like November Rain by Guns N' Roses and how long of a song that is and how yeah. detailed and how beautiful and just how well built well produced everything yeah, yeah it's fantastic but that song is as many minutes long it's not, it's not 40 seconds it's not a minute um and i think it's interesting because how we're perceiving music is changing and and with that too musicians have to try a little bit harder i think nowadays to hold people's attention like i play a lot of music that involves playing a lot of notes a lot of my my specialties as a composer and a recordist are rock, metal, jazz, and like orchestration for like trailer music, and so and well, in film scoring. So like a lot of this stuff involves playing stuff that's technical, ear catching. That's kind of hitting people constantly with uh, aural stimulation, right? Yeah. So the way that we have to think about composing music now is completely different too, and I think. It's a uh, it's a really cool time to be in this space. Even if you're just even if you're just starting out playing guitar, I mean, I've seen dudes on TikTok that know four chords and a couple finger tappy things, and they record all of this into their computer and generate hyper pop samples and things like that. Um, look up R J Passin. I think it's Passin, a P A S I N on TikTok, yeah. not to say anything about that guy's ability because I do not know what his skill level is at, but I just see him do little tippy tappy things on his guitar yeah. and then he flips them up in his DAW um, and turns them into this these amazing, super glitchy things. Um, and I guess they you know, the genre they call it is, is hyper pop, but even that's a, a whole new thing now. That's just, you know, yeah, it's amazing. Thing, so, but, the, but the thing is, Adam, if you're, if you're always going to I, I think you're on the, I mean this makes me sound like a dinosaur I don't care if you if you if you optimize your creative output for sound bites on TikTok I mean come on man what are we doing this for you know that's not you know to me creative music should be more about creative fulfillment expression totally chat, bringing something forth you know from the cosmos through your body and making it into the real world you know like whatever that thing is it comes through you, and then it becomes alive, you know, and and it, and, it, and it exists. And I think, yes, you want your music to be heard by people, but you've got to be careful not to put the cart before the horse. And if you're chasing some kind of TikToky sample thing, you know, like to me, that's you're confusing the ends and the means. You know, the, yeah. the cart, the cart, and the horse. The whole thing's messed up. I think you're right, um, but I also think that it's important to think of TikTok not as the vehicle for music, but the vehicle for presenting the music. And some people do this poorly, and some people do it great. RJ Passin, for example, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. people guy. in to get, you know, catching their attention so that they can then go and appreciate everything else that you've done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this guy, this guy RJ, his whole thing is just sample this or duet this, and he'll just he posts a little clip of him doing a thing, and then he gets hundreds of thousands of people to duet this little snippet, and they make new songs with it, and sometimes he features those artists, and it brings about this beautiful collaborative nature. That sounds but, cool. Uh, I can get on board with that. That sounds fun. Yeah, but a lot of the time he's just using these little bits to hook people in, and uh, an adverse, like kind of a converse example of this. I'm not going to drop her name. Um, but one thing that I saw on TikTok that I wasn't particularly a fan of was there was this one girl who had created this one bit of a song. Um, and it was like a chorus, it was like a pre chorus, or yeah, I guess like a verse and a chorus. And it was sick. It was so cool. The way that she went about it was amazing. But for the next three months, she didn't drop the song. She teased it constantly, the exact same verse, the exact same chorus, and she filmed herself with a bunch of other people doing these tiny little music videos of her singing the exact same parts. Well, by month one and a half, everybody was exhausted. So I decided to do a little bit of a study and see if her engagement actually kept up. And she waited too long to release the song. Song's out now, but the engagement, at least from what I could see, was 
less than what it could have been if she hadn't waited as long. But the thing was, is I think maybe there was a little bit of greed involved in that because all of a sudden you're seeing her doing product placements in this little verse and chorus for a little um, beat pad that she wrote it on and the microphone. And she's got this beat pad and microphone everywhere with her. And it's like, oh, this is a chill for a brand now. It's not about yeah, the music anymore. No, and that's where we kind of cross into that territory of like, oh, yeah. we haven't really let you know, the grand message come down through us and let it flow through us. We yeah. we stopped it halfway down so we could get the bag first and then move on. Wow. And don't get it confused. Money. If you can get the bag, if you can get the endorsement deal, yeah. if you can plug companies that are trying to do great things for musicians, great, do that. But find your balance and don't come off like a corporate shill yeah. in the process. And that's, that's so just hard. kind of my two cents about being a modern musician. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> It's so hard, though, mate, to to straddle that, you know, that line and so hard to get that balance. I mean, we struggle with it all the time, mate. You know this, you know, totally. I, I wish we could do everything for free. I hate having to sell stuff to people. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I know our audience don't enjoy it sometimes. But the bottom line is something's got to pay for my lights. You know, something has to like I have to pay the electricity bill. <laughs> yeah, I said so the same thing to my feel. clients. Yeah, we've got it. We've, we've got to charge for some stuff that's how it is yeah. Listen, let's get to some q a before we run out of time because i don't want to i don't want to leave people hanging a couple of quick questions that we got here um number one here we go uh, i strum with my fingers is it too late to learn using the pick no, no. of course <laughs> not no so whether you primarily pay, play with a pick or with your fingers it's never ever too late to learn the other method and we encourage everybody to do so learn both styles because they're both amazing give you options to different techniques, different rhythmic options, allow you to voice and articulate chords and everything that you play in unique and interesting ways. Every guitarist should learn to play both with a pick and with their fingers. Yeah, and to add to that as well, one thing that you can do if you're used to strumming with your fingers is don't start out with a thin pick because you're not going to feel the same amount of strength behind the strings as you would if you were playing with uh, a thicker pick because you've been playing with your fingers. Um, I'm personally a big fan of tapered guitar picks. This is an acrylic one uh, from Contriver Guitars here in Canada. Um, but these are acrylic. They are two millimeter at the top, one millimeter at the bottom. And what they do is they give you this nice steady grip. You don't have to use these. Anything with a taper on it is really nice because yeah. it gives your hand the ability to kind of grip something that's, where's my camera? Grip something that's on an angle right? Rather than just gripping a flat surface, because those can kind of tend to slip out of our hands, even if they've got a grip on them. You'll notice that this one is, has no grip on it whatsoever, and yet it stays in my hand fluently all the time. And the reason for that is because of the taper. So if you're used to strumming with your fingers, find yourself a thicker guitar pick, and preferably one that has a taper on it. You will thank yourself later. My favorites are... Where's my camera? Where's my camera? Let's see if we can get that there. It's not Autofocus. Autofocus. Come on, come on, you can do it, camera. Focus, focus, it's right there, dude. It's right there, come on. It's a Jim Dunlop acrylic 0.73 pick that I use. Uh, that's what I use all the time. Okay, Howard says, I started with a classical guitar teacher because I wanted to learn finger picking. There are no read teachers of that style here. What is the best way to proceed? Howard, you definitely do not need a classical guitar teacher to learn finger picking. No. Guitarists of all genres um learn finger style and can teach you so don't feel like you have to go with a classical guitar teacher for that at all no. however i would encourage you to learn finger picking um you could try our course finger picking secrets which obviously i'm going to recommend because it's awesome um or you know there's like a million other options online but certainly you don't have to have i think because finger picking is so technique based i think that's actually something you can learn quite effectively on online some things yeah. you do, it's better to have a teacher in the room with you. Um, finger picking, I think you could do a good job of learning that online. Yeah. Go listen to Michael Hedges or Andy McKee, uh, Antoine Dufour, John Gomm, G O M M. Uh, all of these people are absolute insane finger style guitar players, and a lot of them don't have classical training. Some of them do, yeah. but Chris, some of them don't. And Chris, Chris uh, Book, yeah, I mean, Chris Book's Chris fingers Buck, yeah. is like, it's, oh my God. I mean, I love watching him. The way he plays rock guitar with his fingers, so good. Yeah, even go listen to the Allman Brothers band, man, and listen to some of the way that they, they hybrid pick. If you're using a pick as well, and this is something I always encourage people, it doesn't matter what level you're at, to learn. If you like picking and you like finger picking, learn how to hybrid pick. And what that is, 
Very simple. It's both in one. You hold your pick between your thumb and your forefinger, and then you've got these three fingers left here for picking the other strings. It's completely economical. It's my opinion, the best way to play. And it also teaches you better picking, better finger picking, and a third technique, hybrid picking, all in one. Try it out. Yeah, hybrid picking is super cool. I, I can't do it, but just because I haven't practiced it enough, but it's a super cool technique to know. Um, Steve said it's rumor Paul McCartney can't read music. Apparently so, yeah, apparently that is true. Um, I, I did know that. Um, and yeah, it absolutely is possible. You don't need to, one of the cool things about playing the guitar is you don't need to read music. Um, no. I, I always think it's helpful for a musician to be able to use read music, but you absolutely, it's not essential, not for guitar. Rick Rubin doesn't even play an instrument. He's one of the biggest producers in the world. Wow, he doesn't play any instruments, no. No. There's a whole there's a whole interview with him that just dropped. I'll, find, I'll have to find it. Um, but, yeah, he doesn't read music. He doesn't play any instruments. He just walks into the room and knows what's supposed to sound good and then tells everybody what to do. And I'm like, that's, yeah, I love that that's the best thing ever as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I absolutely love that guy. Peter asks, hi, Mike and Adam. Can I and my son play through an acoustic 20 watt amp using a splitter? So, yeah, I assume you mean using like a headphone splitter to, you know, to plug two guitars into one amp. Yeah, I've done that. It's probably not great for the amp. Like if you were going to send like a really high gain signal into the amp. Um, but I think as long as you were both playing clean or yeah. maybe just with a relatively low load. Um, yeah, I've done that. I've done that loads of times. Yeah, just uh, like Mike said, keep the load keep the load light. So don't be cranking the volume up because don't forget you will be sending two signals to one preamp, um, and that can that can make for moody situations. Um, if if one of you is playing a bass, I will say don't do that. Um, but if you you know if you're playing through electric guitars or acoustic guitars, that should probably be fine. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, we've got a couple of late arrivals. Michael's here. Late, but here now, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Oh. Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Stand up. That's my... Is, is that like, is that anywhere near you or is that actually like 3,000 miles away from you or something? Yeah. <laughs> Hamilton's about an hour and a half from me. Hamilton's where I spent two glorious years of my life studying jazz at Mo uh, Mohawk College. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Hamilton's my, Hamilton's my city. I'm not from Hamilton, but Hamilton is my city. For sure. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we have the uh, the best rock, metal, hardcore punk scenes you've ever seen in your life. The music is incredible. The jazz scene is incredible. The musicians, the artists. Hamilton's probably one of the most artistic cities in our province of Ontario. Oh, that's cool. So that yeah, name looks cool. familiar, Michael Kochuk, actually. Yeah. But, uh, but it's it's very early in my memory sucks. But Michael, thank you for showing up. Hamilton, stand up, man. Yeah, for those of you that aren't aware, Adam is a new dad, and which means that he, sleep doesn't happen anymore. So no. he's like, <laughs> Toby is like sleeping at the moment, I guess, Adam, or is he's he's actually he's out for mama? the day with Mama. She's uh, yeah. she's gone to see some family while I uh, we do the live stream, and then I I finished up some tracks today for some artists that I'm working with. So Dad's got the house to himself to yeah. enjoy the peace and, and make quiet. some noise. <laughs> Enjoy the peace and quiet so you can make some noise. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, hey, look, we've got a message here from Bailey Instrumental. Adam, I've heard you mention Bailey Instrumental a few times. Thank you for dropping by. There they are there right they there. Go. Oh, look at that. There we go. Brand yes, place sir. done right. Yes, Hello. sir. That's it. Um, if you guys don't know, Bailey Instrumental slash Contriver Guitars are also from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, uh, and they're a fantastic guitar company that make very bespoke wonderful instruments so yeah, shout yeah. out brett yeah, i'm exactly. telling you man everything amazing about music is coming from hamilton <laughs> We've all come come, come down i'll take you i'll take you to a show at like a, a dive bar in hamilton and you will feel the energy and you'll be like wow that's crazy yeah you, i love hamilton you heard it heard it here first folks hamilton is the place to be yeah uh, we got a message here from steve i also used dunlop pick starting back in the 70s yeah i swear by them steven I absolutely swear by them. I've been using them for years. Um, I've tried so many different types, but the Dunlop ones just, they just work. They just fit, um, fit for me and for like, you know, they just feel right. And I think if, when you find a pick that really works for you, you just, you just stick with it forever, basically. You do. And you, and you should, right. And this is, this is the thing too. Let's just address this quick because so many people We'll find a pick, and I, I had this with my students when I was younger too, so much so with the guitar school I used to run, that 
they'll find a pick, they'll love that pick, but then curiosity kills the cat. So they just move on to the next pick and they show up the next week and they're playing as worse. And it's like, yeah. okay, but why? Oh, well, I was just curious about using this other one. Yeah, but you're playing with so much tighter with that one from last week. Oh yeah, but blah, 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 blah. Listen, if you find something and you love it, stick with it. I played uh, Jim Dunlop nylon one millimeters for over 10 years. And the only reason I stopped is because Brett from Bailey Instrumental uh, invited me up to his shop one day and made me some picks and stuck them in front of me. And uh, I have literally not used a single other pick since because when it feels good, you should use that thing consistently. Yeah. So he got you hooked, basically. He was like, try this. And now you've got to just buy that from him forever now. <laughs> he's, he's sneak. He didn't, even, he didn't even make me buy them off of him. That was the best part. He was like, okay, cool. Have a nice day. And I'm like... Okay, so yeah, shout out Brett, man. The guy makes amazing stuff. And again, if you find something that works for you, stick with it. We don't have to constantly entertain change. Yeah, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. No, and and tone chasers on guitar are the same way. You find one thing, and then you move on to the next thing, and you have to go buy this next amplifier, and this next pedal, and this next thing. If it feels good, and it works well, stick stick with it. it. I mean, that's so true when it comes to gear. People just keep buying new stuff all the time. Yeah. Okay, we got. I haven't haven't bought a new pedal in like two years. We've got a final question here from Martin. He says, I've been learning for two and a half years. This November, I'll be 70. Awesome. Great time of your life to learn guitar, Martin. Most of our students are over 60. Um, I'll be I'll be 70 at my party. My teacher's band is playing. That's super cool. That's awesome. Um, Happy upcoming I'll, birthday. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll be playing some songs with them. Any advice? So, yeah, I guess my advice, Martin, would be enjoy it. Like, no matter what happens, enjoy it. It sounds like a really fun occasion. Um, and maybe in some respects, the culmination of the last two and a half years of learning. So that's fabulous. Um, I guess what I would say is in order to enjoy it more, I would just like practice loads so you can play the songs like with your eyes closed. And then because what happens is you think you know a song if you're not used to performing publicly when you then go up on the stage or perform publicly, all of a sudden it gets like 10 times harder. And this song that you can play perfectly well at home, your fingers just don't work as well. And, you know, like performing publicly does strange things to people. It really does. It messes up your, your physiology. So all I would say is just practice it until you're almost sick of it. Because then when, you know, the pressure's on, so to speak, even though it's not, I know you're not playing at, you know, Wembley Stadium or anything, um, but but just performing publicly affects people in weird ways. Um, so what I'd say is just, yeah, just really, really practice it and know it inside out. And then you can, you'll be able to perform better and enjoy it more on the actual day. Absolutely. And one thing Thanks too that you can always do that really helps, in my opinion, uh, whenever I'm learning music, you learn the whole thing. Learn it front to back. Learn it until you can play it blindfolded. And then take the song that you're playing to and uh, drop yourself in halfway, halfway through the song, right? maybe after the first chorus, and then pick up from the verse or pick up from the chorus. Drop into it. In the recording world, we call this a punch-in. Um, you can do the same thing when you're learning songs. Punch into a specific spot. Test yourself on how well you know how to just drop into one section of a song. And when you can do that, that's how you'll know that you're ready to play live. You'll probably be pretty ready to play live beforehand, but it is a pretty good it is a pretty good test just to make sure how far along you are. And uh, above all else, don't forget, music is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be enjoyable, and it's supposed to be an uplifting spiritual experience. Don't stress yourself out, especially not on your 70th birthday. Happy birthday! <laughs> yeah, enjoy it exactly. That's it. Uh, Martin says he knows one of the songs off by heart now, Summer of 69. Great Big tune. tune. I mean, that's a great tune. I was listening to that just the other day. For the first time in quite a while, I was like, damn, that's an absolute tune. What a great song. You know what's and another I, great song? I was just like, not that I just realized, but just to plug it out there for the for the heck of it. Sympathy for the Devil by Rolling Stones. Stones, yeah. Like, God, it's so good. Like the yeah. whole song is just so good from front to back everything that they do i have a client i'm producing music for right now and he was like i really want a rolling stones vibe in my music so i busted out a shaker and a tambourine yeah. um because mick jagger and it was just yeah kind of immersing myself in their music the last week or so has oh, been mate. it's yeah it's awesome so I mean, sick. I, I mean i said this on the members you know 
on the members live stream a few weeks ago exile on main street's one of my all-time favorite albums that's so good yeah the musicality absolutely. it's so loose nothing's perfect which i love it's human beings that kind of rootsy loose laid back vibe you know just taking a load of people back to the studio after the pub at night like yeah. i just love that you know I, I absolutely love that album adam chrissy was asking uh, she was looking online she can't find any tapered picks can you tell us which brands offer them so like I can. Um, tapered picks. Yeah, uh, there are a couple. Uh, I believe I believe Dunlop makes some tapered picks. I'm not quite sure if they're acrylic. Uh, I will just take this opportunity, just because he's already here and on the uh, and on the call. Bailey Instrumental slash Contriver Guitars. Uh, he makes tapered acrylic picks. I believe he can ship, but these are the ones that I use: the two millimeter to one millimeter. Uh, if I'm going to give you a recommendation, I'm going to give you my favorite, uh, which are these yeah. here. I believe if you go to contrivergutars.com or contrivergutars.ca, um, Brett, toss a link in the chat, man, um, if you're still here. Go check them out. I believe Dunlop would also make them. Uh, Jim Dunlop, try to find something that if you can search a two millimeter to a one millimeter taper, it's going to give you a nice amount of surface area on the top to grip with. And this is... That's my preference. Anything above two millimeters is going to start to get a little bit bulky in the hand. But, um, but yeah, try that out. And if you can't find those, contact Brett at Contriver Guitars and uh, tell him you want his acrylic picks. He'll know the ones that you're talking about because I keep berating him to make more. So go tell him to make more. <laughs> All right, cool. Listen, everybody, we're going to wrap things up because we've gone over the hour. We wanted to just keep it to an hour today. Um, everybody, um, thank you for joining us. Adam, thank, mate, you, thank you for being my co-pilot today on this very first Music Makers live stream. Um, you know, we're both hopeful that this is going to evolve into something much slicker and, you know, more, more, yeah. more features and snazzy stuff in the future. But we just wanted to begin, give this a try, try the software out, figure out what works and what doesn't. Um, this is something that we're going to do more and hopefully get better at as we go along. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed um the live stream today um i know i certainly did it's really fun to get together and do some like live interaction like this absolutely and so yeah so uh, watch out for another music makers live stream um next week next thursday i think but we'll confirm that closer to the time we'll find the time that we kind of settle on that we can stick to in the future but, absolutely um, yeah everybody thank you for joining in today thank you for taking part adam thanks a lot mate and, thank you brother and before we take off just one quick thing if you are interested in learning more about guitar, if you are just starting your guitar journey, or if you're oh, yeah. an intermediate, yeah, yeah. or even an expert guitar player, go to the national go to www.nationalguitaracademy.com. Make sure you sign up for our mailing list. We give you tons of free lesson content. We've got a huge knowledge base on our website of free guitar lessons, and we also have online courses that you can purchase that will help you elevate your guitar playing, no matter what level you are at. Uh, Mike, yeah. I know as well, is in the process of remastering an album of his right now. So yes. hopefully we'll have some music from Mike up on Spotify very soon. And if you'd like to hear some of the stuff that I do, you can search Adam Tobias. That's A-D-A-M-T-O-B-I-A-S on Spotify. My latest single is called I Was Never Here. Go check it out. Go get yourself some free lessons. Go learn yourself some music. And enjoy your day, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah. Sorry, Mike. I just I had to get the pitch in there. <laughs> no, Adam. Adam, you mate, you're you're absolutely like I'm so pleased that you mentioned that stuff at the end. Like, oh, oh yeah, buy our stuff. We sell stuff. You buy it. It's like yeah. yeah, that's like we want you to buy. We want you to buy our stuff. That's how we keep doing this. Go um, go go buy some stuff. You know what? Go buy yourself an NGA T-shirt as well. We've got a merch <laughs> store. Yeah. And if you do buy a T-shirt, tag us on Instagram, tag us on Facebook so that we can see it and we post it. We love you all so much. Thank you for showing up today. We can't wait to do more of these. See you next Thanks, week. Thanks, everybody. Bye for now. Bye for now.